Hey, what's up everybody? Brian here with the Holy Roller playing craps on a cruise to earn a free cruise. I'm on the freedom of the sea right now and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how to play craps when you're on a cruise. Let's talk about it, here we go. Welcome to the Holy Roller where it's all about playing craps and winning free cruises. I'm gonna show you what it's all about, so let's get rolling. Let's talk about when they pass you dice. So they're gonna pass you five dice and all you do is you choose two and then they'll take the other three away, okay? So now let's talk about with these two that you choose, what you can and cannot do, okay? Now, uh, let's go back to this, for example. Um, if you're choosing dice, and it's time to choose the dice, um, you can do this one time. And we're talking about on a Royal Caribbean ship, you can't keep doing that. So you can't just keep going like this, and going like this until you decide you could do that one time when you're on a Royal Caribbean ship. They'll let you go like this and go like this one time. And then you choose your two. And then from then, now let's talk about what you can't do. You can't do private rolls, something like this. Can you see that against the mirror here? You, whether it's against the wall or against the mirror, you can't do any private rolls like this until you decide that you want to roll the dice, okay? That's one thing that you can't do. Um, and I'm just, I'm kind of talking to you about what not to do, uh, but we'll, we'll kind of see. Now you can set the dice, no problem. The other, the other thing you can't do is you can't switch hands. Uh, you can't do this. If you ever want to switch hands with the dice, this is on any crab's table, by the way, you can't use two hands on the dice. So if you ever say you have this hand and you want to pick it up with the other hand, instead of passing, you just lay them down and then pick up with your other hand. The other thing you can't do with the dice is take them past this rail here. You can't pull them out what's called out of the table. So if you pick them up and you pull them out of the table, they're gonna say, hey, whoa, 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 put them back in the table. So you keep them inside the table, okay? Um, and then when you do throw the dice, uh, they can't be higher than the stick person. There'll be a stick person here and that stick, they usually put the stick right here and it's facing straight up and it has like the hook on it up here. And the reason why they do that is because the dice are not supposed to go above that stick or the eye level of the person that's standing here. Now you might say, what if there's a short dealer or a tall dealer? What do you mean eye level? Well, that's where the stick comes in. When they put the stick up, they usually, it's facing straight up. The dice can't go higher than that stick whenever you throw them. So if you were to throw the dice really high and then have them drop down, they'll say, hey, keep them low, keep them low. Okay, so that's something when you throw them. Now, when you do throw the dice, um, you can shake them like this and throw them. You can just, you know, grab them and throw them. You can set them and throw them, uh, however you want to do. But I always say, don't set them and then shake them and throw them <laughs> because that doesn't make sense, right? Um, don't, don't, try not to be a, 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 a setter shaker at the same time. <laughs> so that's one thing to think about. So um, that's all about choosing dice. Um, I think a lot of times what people do is they'll pass you the dice. Now remember, you can't go like this, right? Uh, you can't, like if they pass you the dice, you can't shake them and do like this and then get ready to throw them. They'll, they'll stop you from doing that. So what I, what, if I wanted to do that, if they passed me the dice, what I would do is I'd pick them up and I'd accidentally drop them. <laughs> and then I would get ready to throw again, um, if, that's, if that's the way I would do it. So, uh, and sometimes when they pass me the dice, like I, I would hit them like that. As they're sending them to me, I would just hit them and then grab them. So that's a way you could get around that no, no private rolls. They call it no private rolls, please, okay? So, um, I think those are the main things you can't do with the dice. Uh, oh, you can't um, blow on them, you can't kiss them, you can't, as I've seen one person do, uh, you can't like rub them on your chest. <laughs> those are the kind of things you can't do. Why can't you rub them on your chest? Because you'd be pulling them out of the table and don't try to lean in and then rub them on your chest either. But the idea is no, no, uh, no kissing. Uh, the dice, no blowing on the dice. You know, sometimes people, they <laughs> blow on the dice. Don't do that, don't do that. Um, and so those are the kind of things you can't do. Um, and then uh, I think that's one of the things that a lot of people need to know. So again, going back when it's time to choose 
they pass you five, uh, pick two, they'll take three away. But remember, when you do take the two, you can shake them and roll them once. But if you do this again, if you do it more than once like this, they're gonna say, hey, sir, please, or hey, ma'am, please. No, no, no private rolls. You can do that one time, all right? So, now it's time to roll the dice. Now, when you do roll the dice, you're going to need a pass line bet or a don't pass bet. So let's talk about that. I guess I should have said that at the beginning, but if you don't have a pass line bet, they're not gonna pass you the dice. You can't roll the dice unless you have a pass line or a don't pass. In fact, if you're not rolling the dice, I would, I would recommend never to play the pass line. And we could talk about that in another video, but mainly everybody thinks you have to play a pass line to pe play, but you don't, just to roll, okay? So we have a pass line here of $10. This is a $10 minimum table. You'll always see a plaque here that will tell you what the minimum is, okay? So if the minimum is 10, then you have to put 10 on each and every bet. We'll talk about that in just a second, but you're gonna have $10 here. Now, this wins on 7-Eleven when the puck is off. Can you see that puck over there? The puck is off. So being that the puck is off, you can um, roll a 7 and 11 right now to win this bet. And if you win this bet, you would get paid double. So it's pretty much even money bet, okay? Now, a 2, 3, or 12 would lose here, okay? And those are what's called the craps numbers, okay? So a 2, 3, and 12 are what's called craps. Those are the craps numbers. If the puck is off, like you see right there, and you have a pass line, this is what's called a come out roll. So the puck is off, there's called a come out roll. If you roll a 7 11, you win what's called a front line winner or pass line winner. If you roll a 2 3 or 12 right now, it's what's called crapping out, okay? That would be a crap out. Now, if you crap out, you would lose this bet. You'd have to put another $10 here and you would still roll. So, a lot of times people say, um, you know, hey, I roll until I crap out. And they think uh, they, a crap out is when you roll a seven when the puck is on. In fact, the only way to crap out is to roll a two, three, or 12 when the puck is off and you still roll the dice. So anybody that ever says they roll the dice until they crap out, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? <laughs> because two, three, or 12 are the craps numbers, all right? So if I wanted to, for example, I had $10 here, two, three, or 12 would lose, seven or 11 would win. If I wanted to what's called hedge my bets or insure my bet right here, I can put $2 and I can bet on any craps. The C means craps. So the C is a bet on two, three, and 12. The E is a bet on 11, which I already have a bet on the 11 because I'm on the pass line right now. And the horn is pretty much all of these numbers together. A two, three, 11, 12 is called a horn. And so the minimum bet on a horn right here is $4 because it would be $1, $1, $1, $1. The minimum bet on a craps number could be $1 and it pays seven to one. Any craps pays seven to one. It is important to know that this is a one roll bet here and this is a two part bet. So it wins on 7-Eleven and it loses on 2-3-12 while the puck is off. Cause right now the game is off. We're gonna get a, what's called a point established when we roll that on a come out roll. Now, if we wanted to ensure this with a one roll bet here, this is $10 and this pays seven to one. If I put $1 on what's called any craps, you would say $1 C or $1 any craps. That would pay uh, $7 or I could do this and put two there, that would pay 14. Now with this one, you pretty much just throw in the money and you say uh, $2 any crap and then they will set it right here. And the reason why they set it here is if this is your spot, sorry, normally those wouldn't be there. But if this is your spot, then you would be here. And if you're in this second spot, then you would be here. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight spots around the table. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So that's the point of having these all right here. So they know who bets it pretty much, okay? But you don't place that. This is a self-service bet, meaning you place this. 
And if you want to bet those, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So right now we could do $2 on any crap bet. And if we roll a two, three, or 12, we would lose this, but that bet would win 14. So we'd actually win $4. If it's a seven or 11, we would lose this. Actually, if it's anything other than a two, three, or 12, we would lose this bet. If it's seven, 11, we would win that one while the puck is off. And then if it's any one of these numbers, they become the point, okay? So what's the point? We'll talk about it in just a second. Okay, let's do that. Let's do a crap check with a $2 C. Now you hear a lot of people, they'll say C and E. $2 C and E, and what they do is they'll either put it right here or they'll put it, it's pretty much a bet like this. Now, it doesn't make sense to do a $2 C and E um, if you're on a come out roll because a C, the 11, the C and the E, right? The E is an 11. You already have a bet on the 11. So I would always do $2 C and a $10 uh, if you're on a $10 table. Now, if you're on a $15 table, just do a $3 C and then that would win 21 and uh, you would have 15 there. So, um, or you can do two and you would lose a dollar, I guess. Um, so let's do $2 here, okay? Now, if you had more money out here, so the idea is $1 for every $5. So if you had $25 here, then you would do $5 on any craps. Now, if you did wanna do $3, it would make sense to do what's called a three-way craps. That is a bet on $1 here, $1 here, $1 there. That's called a three-way craps. And sometimes what they do is they'll just line it up right here, just like that, and they'll say, that's a $3 crap bet right there. So three-way craps pays more than $3 right here because if it's a, a three, it pays 15, but if it's there, it pays 30, and that pays 30. So you do lose the other one, so the difference would be 28 or 27. So think about it uh, like that, a three-way craps. If you're gonna do $3, do a three-way craps instead of any craps, okay? But we're gonna do $2, okay? Don't get lost here, because now I'm gonna show you how the game works. Here we go. So now what we're gonna do, the puck is off, it's seven or 11, okay? Uh, to win on the pass line, and it is two, three, 12 to win on the craps check but let's see what we roll, okay? So I'm just gonna set the dice to what I like to roll. I like to roll a one, two, uh, three, one. So meaning I have a one and a two and a three and a one. All right, so that's what I like to roll. And I'm hoping that I'll hit a four, a three, a 10 or an 11. That's kind of how I like to do it. Now, if I hit the three, I would win over there, I would lose here. If I hit the 11, I would win here, I'd lose there. If I hit the four, 10, then that will become the point. Let's see what I'll hit. Here we go, I'm gonna roll it. Now, on a roll Caribbean table, the, uh, the dice have to hit the back wall in order for it to count as a roll. So let's see what happens. Let's see if they hit the back wall. Yep, definitely hit the back wall and it's a five, okay? So now, this, the roll is a five. I'm gonna have to go over here. I don't have a stick, but what that means is the point becomes five. Because I rolled a five, now I have to roll a five again. And I'll talk to you about that in just a second. So then the puck will go on, and so it'll be on the five right there. Now, they're gonna put the dice, after it rolls, they're gonna put the dice right here in the middle. This is the time, whenever the dice are right there, that is the time that everybody should be doing their bets. So we lost this bet because it wasn't a two, three, 12. Okay, so we're down $2, but we insured that $10. In order to win that bet right there, we have to roll a five before a seven, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to bet a four. Now this is a $10, uh, $10 table, so $10, $10, $10, $10, on the four, five, nine, and 10. Now, this bet right here, is a bet on the five because that's where the puck is. Okay, there would normally be a puck on this side as well. So this is a bet on the five, but we can't move it now. It's a contract bet. You can't move it, you can't take it. So that's why I said it's a two-part bet. The first bet when I put it down, it was 7-Eleven. That's what it was betting on. And now it's a bet on the five, which I didn't know what it was gonna roll. So now let's say I wanted to bet the nine, for example, $10. 
what you would do is you take $10 and you put it on this line right here. Not, not here, not here, but on the line. So if I wanted to bet, say $20, say I want the nine and 10, then I would stack all my money and put it on the line and I would tell this dealer that stands here, I would say, give me a nine and 10, please. The reason why you wanna put it here is because if it's here, they won't let the dice roll unless that bet is set, because it's not set. If you put it here, and uh, they don't get to it, they could pass the dice out. They might think that's a filled bet, meaning it's betting on one of these, but it's a one roll bet. So whenever you put it out there, you wanna make sure it's on the line. Now, if you're over here, do the same thing. Just make sure it's on a line, just like this, like this. Sometimes people put it out here and that's fine. However, that could be viewed as what's called a cum bet, which that's a whole nother video we'll talk about later. Uh, but that's why I always say, if you wanna bet, put it on the line, okay? And that way they won't let the dice roll unless this bet is set. All right, now, the six and eight are a good probability, but on a $10 table on Royal Caribbean, you can't bet $10. So say if I say the six and eight, and I say, give me a six and eight. The, the minimum bet on a six and eight uh, is $12, because you have to do multiples of six. So they would set it. Now, you would just put it on the line. Let's add four more dollars. Give me a six and eight, please. Then the dealer over there would set it, and they would set their bets. Now, see these boxes? Why did they set it there? Because this is your spot. You're in box number one, box number two, box number three. So if I was in this box, then this is where my money would be, right here, on the second box of all of these, right? Now, if I was way over here, so one, two, three, four, five, watch this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is this spot way over here. So if I'm standing over here, then I know that that box is my box for where my money would go. If I'm right here, in the seventh spot, then that's box number seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's where my money would be. It's always important to know where your money is whenever you bet. Okay, so now I have a bet on the six and eight. Now, this is a bet on the five. That's a bet on the six and eight. And the reason why this is a bet on the five is because the point is five. Okay, now I have to roll a five. Now, once all bets are set, they're gonna say, dice are out. Okay, and when they say dice are out and they pass it to the shooter with a stick, I don't have a stick, but that's when there's no more bets. Okay, so no more bets. Dice out means no more bets. So if you don't see the dice right here, don't bet, the, don't bet because a lot of times they'll send the dice out and then people are still trying to bet, like throwing money in the field and different things like that. Now the cool thing about, uh, or interesting I should say, about a field bet, on a normal craps table, if you have a $10 table, you have to bet $10 here. But on Royal Caribbean, these are all one roll bets here, and this is a one roll bet, but it's a $1 minimum filled bet. So I could put $5 in here if I wanted to. I don't have to do $10, I could put $5. Now, the, the only numbers that aren't in here is the seven, of course, and then the, there's no five, there's no six, there's no eight. But I do have a bet on the five, I do have a bet on the six, I do have a bet on the eight. I guess I could put $5 here and cover every other number except for the seven. If the seven rolls right now, I would lose all of this money. Now, if you ever bet uh, the five, six, and eight and the field, always make sure to bet one less unit, meaning I would never wanna bet 10 here and have 10 or 12 out there because that's only a difference of $4. So imagine this, look. 10, 20, 30, 40, four dollars to win four dollars. That doesn't make sense. Now I could bet. <laughs> now this one's this one's uh, this one's a little bit less. It's like what is this? Uh, 12. Uh, sorry, 12, 12. That's 24, 34, 39 dollars, 40 to win five or nine dollars. That's not necessarily a good bet either. However, it is covering all the numbers. So let's go ahead and try it and see because. Ultimately, you would like to be uh, up another level here where that pays, because this right here will pay 14 if it hits, this will pay 10, that will pay five, but if it, if it wins on a, if it hits a six and eight right now, I'm gonna lose this. 
and then, uh, but these will stay there no matter what. Let's just roll and see what happens. I should say not no matter what. Those will stay there as long as a seven doesn't roll. How about that? All right, let's do that same set that we did last time. And let's see if I can get a uh, five again, right? But if a six, actually anything rolls but a seven would be great right now. Let's see what happens. All right, hit the back and it's a nine, okay? So both dice have to hit the back wall or they'll say no roll, okay? So it's a nine. So see the nine right there? Anybody, notice how I bet on the six and eight? Anybody that bet on the six and eight, uh, their bets stay there. And anybody that bet on the nine, they got paid. Now we happen to bet in the field and a nine rolled. So we actually get paid right there, $5. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this in our rack and they will put it right next to it, pretty much just like that. Now remember, right now, the, the dice are gonna be out there. The dice are gonna be out there and they're gonna be waiting. And they don't wanna pass you the dice with a seven on it. They don't wanna pass you the dice with like a three. Um, so they don't wanna pass you the dice with any horn number, which is a craps number, an 11 or a seven. They shouldn't pass you the dice. So you'll see the stick people will pass you and it might be an 11 on the side or a seven on the side, but the top should always be like one of these box numbers. Now, because the point is a five, a good box person would probably pass you a five, okay? But not every box person does. But being that the dice are there, uh, it's time to collect or say bets, right? So right now, because we got paid here, we have to pick this up. They're not gonna pass it to us over here they're gonna leave it right there. And if it stays in there, it plays. So if you want, you can stack it or you could just collect it. We're gonna go ahead and collect it because we're hoping that one of those bets, a six and eight would hit or a five would be fine even. Okay, so let's see. Now it's time to bet, okay? Dice are out, no more bets is what that means. When dice are out, no more bets. All right, let's roll again and see what the next what the next roll would be, okay? Here we go. Uh, let's, get, let's get that set again. The one, two, three, one. Here we go. Let's see what we roll. Can we get a five? And it's a 10. It's a 10. It hit the back wall, so it's a 10, a six, four, 10. Anybody that bet on the 10 wins on the 10. We happen to win another $5 because we're in the field. So this is pretty much a system right now. It's called the Iron Cross. When you bet, when you're betting the five, six, eight, and filled, and you win on every roll. Now you don't win a lot on every roll, but you do win on every roll. So that's something to think about. So we win another five dollars, and so we collect that. Then they pass the dice back out to us, and now we roll again. So we keep rolling until we hit a five or a seven. Now. A five just means that we'll start the game over, but this game has been working and this game is on. So imagine you walk up to the table and the game is on. Now you didn't see, you didn't see the come out roll. You didn't see any of the numbers. We rolled a nine, we rolled a 10, right? You didn't see all that. Well, the game is on right now, meaning that everybody was here at the table is playing this round. They're playing this hand, it's called. So they're playing this hand. Now, if you weren't here at the beginning of the hand, you shouldn't, you shouldn't bet in right now. You, shouldn't, you should wait until that puck is off before you enter the game. Because right now, everybody that was here is playing this hand. You're not playing this hand. So wait until that puck is off before you put money down and start playing. All right, now it can go off if we hit the five or if we hit the seven. Okay, let's hit that five. Let's see if we can get it. And I don't even know what that is. What is it? What is it? Oh my gosh, it's a seven. See, we just talked about walking up at the table. Uh, good thing you didn't put any money down because you would have lost all your money. Now the puck goes off, right? So the puck is off. So we're gonna, it's gonna go right over there. And all of this money that everybody had out here, everybody lost. All the money on the table is all gone. The dealers, they take it, it's all gone. Because we did what's called seven out. Whenever the puck is on and you roll a seven, that's when everybody loses all their money that's out here. Unless you were on the don't pass, we could talk about that in a second, okay? So let's talk about now, the, they're gonna pass out five more dice, right? 
to the next shooter. And it always goes like this, clockwise, right? So now we're gonna pass it to the next shooter. But this next shooter, they're gonna actually play on the don't pass. So how would you do that? Okay, so this next shooter comes and they're gonna actually play their bet on the don't pass. Now, in order to pass or win that last time, we had to roll a five before a seven. Let's see, because this one actually right now loses on 711 and it wins on 2 3, but it bar or pushes on the 12. So the 12 doesn't count for this bet. So remember, we did, uh, it's kind of like an opposite, right? An opposite game. So let's look and see $1 on an 11, right? $1 on an 11 would actually pay 15, but 11 would lose here, okay? And then you can bet on the any seven. Um, if you put one dollar right here, it would pay five dollars or four four extra dollars. So I mean that's ten. So you'd have to put two dollars there, really. But then you would. I mean, if you put two dollars there on any seven to match. I mean, sometimes it's it makes sense. You know what? Just to if a seven comes, you lose that right there. Why not just think about it that way? Let's put in one dollar for any 11, just in case we could win 15 for that bet. So we're, we're in it $11 for this. Okay, so now the puck is off. It's time to enter the game. When the puck is off is the only time you can actually play and put down a don't pass bet. When the puck is on, you can put a, a pass line bet. Say like you did walk up or you didn't, say you didn't, uh, say you're here playing, you can put a pass line bet even if the puck is on but it doesn't make sense because remember it's a two part bet um, and that second part was on the five, right? Well, $10 here would have paid 10 and $10 on the five would have paid 14. So you always get paid more when you're, when you're playing the bet, uh, when you're placing the bet rather than playing it on here. Now you might say, wait, Brian, you have to tell them about pass line with odds. Okay, I'll talk about that next, but let's talk about this. I'm actually gonna move this don't pass over here so that you could see it. And so right now, we have a seven or 11 that would lose this, a two, three would win. Okay, so now, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna pick some dice, right? So let's pick those ones. They'll take the other three away. Let's go ahead and set our dice and get ready to throw. Let's get a two or a three right now. That would win right here, but no seven. And 11 would be okay, but no seven. We don't want any seven. Here you would want a seven when the puck is off. Right here you don't want a seven when the puck is off. Let's see what happens. And it is a seven, okay? So remember when I was talking about this roll. It's off, so it's what's called a frontline winner. Now anybody and everybody that put money right here won. If you put money right here, you won four to one. Remember, it's the same bet as right here the any seven. So maybe we should have done that, right? Maybe we should have because we just lost this and we lost this. So we lost $11 on that roll. All right, so let's go again and we're gonna put $10 here. And uh, let's not do the 11 this time, okay? They're gonna pass the dice out. They won't pass it out with a seven on it, but they'll pass the dice out. So let's set it and let's roll again and see if we can get a point established. Okay, so now we're gonna roll and we're gonna roll Hopefully one of those numbers, how about a two or three would be great, let's see. And it is a nine. So the nine rolls, and so now that the nine rolls, the point becomes nine, okay? And I have to roll a nine before a seven in order to pass, right? However, this is a don't pass bet. What does that mean? That means I have to roll a seven before a nine. Now, there's only four ways to make a nine a six, three, or three, six, or there's gonna be a five, four, or four, five. So there's only four ways to make a nine. There's six ways to make a seven. There's 36 different combinations, and six ways is to make a seven. So this is actually better odds than the nine. To win this bet is more common that I could win, like remember the five? The five had four ways, and I hit a seven before a five, and I lost this bet. Now this would win on a seven, would lose on a nine, okay? Now let's do that same scenario, uh, but this time we got $10 here that wins on a seven. Let's just put, let's put, uh, because it's the nine, let's put $12 there and say, Diller, give me uh, eight. 
$12.8. So now we have a bet on the eight and we have a bet on the seven, right? But we lose on the nine. So the nine is the bad number for this one. And nine is the good number for the pass line people, but seven is the bad number. So we just made nine the bad number with only four ways instead of making uh, seven the bad number with six ways. Now seven's not a bad number. Although if the seven does come, we'll lose 12, but we'll win 10. So we're playing for $2 right now. And you might say no, because you, you lost on that seven. Yeah, we lost, but let's see if we can hit an eight. Um, that would be great. Uh, but let's do that same set. Let's see if we can get, let's see if we can get an eight. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we got an eight. Okay, so what that means is anybody that bet on the eight, which we did get paid, okay? And so that's gonna pay 14, or they may say, give me a dollar. The reason why they're saying give me a dollar is because it's $14 or 15 for one. So they'll take your one and they'll give you $15, okay? So now we won $14, right? And uh, remember we lost 10, 11 last time. So now we're kind of even, but we do want to hit another eight, but let's see. Let's see what we hit next, okay? We're gonna do that same set. And let's see if we can hit an eight again. That would be pretty amazing, huh? You know, there's five ways to make an eight. There's five ways to make a six, but let's see if we can hit an eight again. And it's a 10, but I don't know if you, you probably couldn't see it. This die did not hit the wall. It kind of just stopped right there. This die did hit the wall. On a Royal Caribbean ship, this is no exceptions, no warnings. They would say no roll. So this count, this would not count as a roll because it didn't hit the back wall. The back wall, it has to hit between there and on the other side of the glass, like this actual, this uh, what they call alligator. That's where it needs to hit. This doesn't count as the back wall, okay? So it has to hit this back wall. So this would have been called a no roll. But we didn't have a bet on the 10, so we wouldn't have got paid. We didn't have a bet in the field, so we wouldn't have got paid even if it was a good roll. Let's see if we could get a, let's see if we can get a nine. Well, we don't want a nine, but let's see if we can get another eight. How about that? <laughs> That's the only bet we have is on the seven and on the eight. There's an 11, so that one, those both hit. So that was a good roll in 11. So notice there's no 11 up there. The field would have rolled, or if anybody would have rolled or bet the E, or what's called a yo, yo 11. The reason why they call it yo is because 11 sounds like seven. So they want to say yo 11. Now I know this video is kind of getting long, so we're going to speed it up. I'm going to just show you one more, and then we'll explain what odds are and how to bet odds in just a second. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can get another eight. Why not? All right, so. Oh, seven out, seven out. Uh, that's a five, two, seven. So now this puck goes off and anybody that was on the pass line, they lose. Remember all the money out here loses, uh, except for this bet. So we lose tw 12, but we win 10, okay? Cause this gets paid right there. And so, because a seven came before the nine, so now we won. So it's kind of like the opposite game. Some people would say this is betting against the shooter, but it's actually betting with the dice. This is, this is betting against the odds, and this is betting with the odds. That's a good way to think about it. This, this bet right here, it only has an advantage on the first roll, and this bet only has a disadvantage on the first roll. So this bet um, has the 7-11 uh, win on the come out. One roll, you have the advantage. Then. You have the disadvantage. This one, one roll, 7-11 uh, lose, right? The seven, you would lose like we did. That's the disadvantage, but after that, the seven is the most probable or highly likely number. So that's why that's the best bet if you can get past that come out roll when the puck is off. That's when you wanna get past the seven and 11 right here. All right, let's talk about odds. So, uh, and then we'll be done with the video, okay? Now, with odds, there's no place for odds, it's just what's called behind the line. Now on a Royal Caribbean ship, you can only do single odds. So uh, $10 here is only $10 here. If you go to 15, you could do more and 20, but let's just talk about even odds, you know, the way. So let's say the point is uh, four, for example. 
If the point was four and you had $10 here and $10 here, if you won and we actually passed where we got the four, you're gonna win even money here and then you'd win double money back here. So a $20 bet would win $30 um, right here. Now, that would be the same on the 10, the four and the 10, okay? Now the five and nine, because there's more ways to make a five and nine, the payoff's a little bit different. You actually only win, you win $5 less. So you actually only win a bet and a half in the back and even money. You always win even money on this but a bet and a half on the back. So what that means is a $20 bet would pay $25, okay, if you hit it. Now remember, this is a two-part bet. You can't bet the odds without the pass line, and that's why these the single odds doesn't make sense, and I'll show you in a second, but let's do the six and eight, okay? So again, this would still stay there, and you would win two, and two so every for every red you'll get a red and you'll get a, a one dollar chip which so right here you could see twenty dollar bet pays twenty two dollars okay does that make sense if you win if you win now now remember when i was saying single odds doesn't really matter or doesn't really count like as good the reason why is because remember this is only a good bet on the first roll and then it's a bad bet on every roll after it because it only pays even money. So people would say, well, let's pay, play odds so we have the best, people call this, sometimes they call it the best because there's no casino hedge on this, but watch this. this that's a myth, okay, and let me tell you why it's a myth. Because this is $20, okay, remember, what does $20 win if a four or 10 hit? It pays $30, right? 30 right? If you put the same $20, let's say you didn't even play the pass line and you're just wanting, instead of playing this, I'm just going to wait for the point to be established and I'm going to play $20, the same $20. If the point is four, I'm going to place it on the four. Give me a four, please. And then they'll put it on the four. Now that that's going to be, uh, a, a pay more than $30. That's going to pay $38, $37. So you actually get $7 more if you play it there than if you played it over here. Okay, let's talk about the five and nine. Same thing. If you had your, your uh, $20 here and you won on the five and nine, you would win $25, right? So that's right here. Now let's say you didn't play the pass line and you wanted to just bet the five or the nine. Say, give me a five, $20 five actually pays, not 25, it pays 28. So you get paid more when you're over there whenever you're playing single odds. Okay, so now let's talk about the six and eight. Um, let's see, what's that? Six and eight is, what did we say it was? It was 20, uh, 22, right? $22. Now remember on the six and eight, so you got $20. So on the six and eight, this is the lowest payout uh, as far as how much you have to bet. But remember, you can't do a $20 bet. You have to do a $24 bet um, or you have to do an $18 bet. But let's say we did 24, that pays 28. Or if you did 18, it pays 21. So that's where it's very close or comparable, but it still doesn't make sense because this is the main thing that I'm gonna tell you and then we'll finish the video. Whenever you play odds, so remember you play 10 here and 10 here. Okay, let's say we all we did was play, let me gather these. Let's say all we did was play the pass line with odds. That's $20 on the table, $20 on the table. They're recording your bets for a free cruise, but they never, no casino ever gives comp value on odds. So right here, this is, even though you have $20 out, it's only counted as a $10 bet. So half your money doesn't even get counted as far as comps. But if I put the same 20 out on the nine, right? I get, I get rated for a $20 bet, not a $10 bet. So that's why I always think instead of playing pass line with odds, it's always better just to place the number, especially on a cruise, because you get comp value and it pays more than single odds because you'd have to bet five times odds to make this bet a better bet than out there. So 
five times or more, and you really can't even do that with, uh, with most casinos. It's just three, four, five times odds. So you can only really break even on a six and eight. So it doesn't make sense to play the pass line with odds when you're on a cruise because no comp value and it pays more when you play out there. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, but I figured, hey, why not do a little starter video for people that want to learn how to play craps on a cruise to earn a free cruise. I think the big takeaway should be that whenever you're playing craps on a cruise, never play pass line with odds unless you're rolling the dice. If you're not rolling the dice, just bet the number. That's how you can win a free cruise. That's at least one step closer. Uh, is not playing pass line with odds, but playing the number instead. And hopefully that helped. So watch this video if you'd like to see more, and I hope to see you cruising and rolling on a craps table soon. And let's win a cruise together. Come on, somebody. See ya.